Hello, guys, this is the continuation of Lu Sheng or logging 10,000 years into the future. Seeing the lifeless body of their comrade, the other madmen were in shock and couldn't believe what happened. Lu Sheng stared at the boasting man, calling him a weakling because he couldn't even withstand a single attack. Hong Wu was in disbelief that the man previously named the Eastern Star, who had power exceeding 13 stars, was defeated so easily, like a fly. The madmen quickly run from the scene, but Lu Sheng won't let them be. He raised his hand, surrounded with aura, and the madmen's bodies were cut off like a fruit ninja in just a swing. While the bald egg couldn't believe Sir Lu Sheng's strength, who has 12 stars of combat power, Hong Yu thinks that this time, their eastern military division will be on top of the competition. Now that the floor was almost clear, Lu Sheng told them to wait for him. He swiftly ran and went deeper into the spatial crack. He wondered what the divine was and what the identity of the being Lu Moying had mentioned earlier was. In the depths of the spatial crack, Lu Sheng noticed the silence in the area and observed that the black fog was very dense. The area has psychic energy ranging from rank 7 to rank 8, and he concluded that if someone weaker came here, they would be left completely blind. As he wondered if he should force his way, a blinding light suddenly appeared before his eyes, and he was brought into a peaceful place. A feet of woman landed above the water, and as he looked at the creature, he asked himself if this was an otherworldly being. A woman with a floppy pair of melons gave him a sweet smile, and as she extended her hand, Lu Sheng was surprised to see an intellectual life form in the place and noticed that she was interested in him. Pink petals slowly fall. And as he moves forward, he asks if this creature is interested in humans and wonders if this is love across the species. However, when his golden aura is triggered, the beautiful woman turns into an ugly monster who looks like an ant, and as she stares at him, she asks him not to be afraid and to come nearer. She tried to lure him by saying that everything he desired was there, and as he slowly moved, the monster's tentacles slowly surrounded him and told him to continue moving. She addressed him as a dear child, telling him to come into her arms. She showed her sticky tongue, and Lu Sheng released an aura from his hand and threw it toward the disgusting face of the monster. He clarified that such a scary creature wouldn't make him fall from its trick. He smiled while giving her a spicy finger, making the monster angry because she didn't want one finger but four at least. I mean, she despises disobedient children and repeatedly states that she will kill him. She commanded her minions to attack him, and in the blink of an eye, the scene changed where Hong Yu was holding Lu Moying's tag. She was certain that it was really him. In the background, the idiots kept rummaging through the madman's belongings. The orange guy found out that one of them was a master from KOU martial schools. The bald egg discovered that this one was Hong Feng, headmaster of Thunder Martial Schools. Hong Yu told them to keep their identification because they would report this matter when they returned. She looked at the dead bodies and couldn't believe that in a single strike, almost 30 masters had died. She concluded that this is the largest bloodshed among masters in recent years. Baldig clarifies that they were already dead for a long time and just simply died again, and they can't call them good people. Lu Sheng suddenly arrived and told them to pack up quickly because they were leaving the spatial crack immediately. He ordered Hong Yu to find a way to notify the other teams in the spatial crack and tell them to escape quickly. He revealed that he had accidentally angered some little creatures within the spatial crack, and they were now rioting. They quickly ran to get out of the spatial crack and jumped as high as they could to reach the surface. Upon landing, Hong Yu was glad they had safely made it. Luckily, the otherworldly beasts couldn't climb up. Hong Yu inquired what he did to cause such a huge surge and explained that they were fortunate that there were too many beasts, because if they grouped up properly, there might be a chance that those monsters could catch them. Lu Sheng responded that it was nothing and told her they should transport the goods to the base. She smiled in response, and the three idiots were so glad while lifting the bags full of dense silver. They started to walk with smiles, and Lu Sheng took a look at the spatial crack while declaring that he would make sure that the bug earlier crawled in front of him and gave it an uppercut. At the Eastern Military Division headquarters, the people were astonished to see the dense silver the Scorpion team had discovered. They mumbled how lucky they were because it was not only top quality, but also extraordinary in purity. The three morons laugh, boasting about their achievements. Yao Yu told them it was not just luck and reminded them that Lu Sheng's vehicle license plate, which is DZ0002, was the vehicle of the first grade expert. The old man was shocked that Lu Sheng was the unknown young man expert, and Yao Yu sadly mumbled that if he knew Lu Sheng was the real boss, he would held his leg, imagining those things made his salty milk get out of his nose. Baldeg elaborates that although Sir Lu Sheng's combat power was displayed as 12.5 stars, he was certain that those results were not his full power, 
and concluded that he had more than 20 stars. Hearing his words shocks the Red Snail team. Five minutes later, at Lu Shang's residence, he told the Scorpion team to take care of the goods from the spatial crack. When it was all done, they would get their 10% share, as they agreed. Before leaving, they saluted Sir Lu Shang and answered in the affirmative. He immediately lay on his bed and went into the dream space. He opened the system to see what was in the abyss and about the monster he had encountered earlier. After pressing the button for the spatial crack information, he was surprised to learn that it was connected to the second battlefield. The abyss is a space split that forms when two worlds overlap and collide. These splits can be different. If the formation is relatively complete, then a gray zone will appear. That zone will be large enough to accommodate otherworldly masters. These two types of space or universe had unexpectedly overlaid and collided for some reason, becoming the source of the otherworldly beast's invasion. However, it was obvious that the otherworldly beasts were more potent than the people, resulting in the beasts easily invading the people's world. On the contrary, it is hard for people to reach other worlds. According to the memories of the zombies he absorbed, there have been a small number of times when rank 10 or rank 11 masters have taken action, and masters of the Eastern Evil Sun's level have only been heard of. They all went to the second battlefield to fight against the monsters that came from another world. Many strong men went to the battlefield one after another, and beasts also changed with time. It became a big struggle for humanity for the next 10,000 years of history. The tension between the two civilizations reaching their peak ends up depending on the might of their best fighters, and in the end, humanity loses. This is the reason why people have been trying to give birth to a rank 12 through Project Spark. He wondered if humanity could win this time if rank 12 was reached. He knew it was a hard task, but to enter the second battlefield, one must be at least rank 10 and he was just currently in the year 300 MC. Knowing that he couldn't reach the time when the second battlefield would happen, he suddenly felt sad. However, he became determined to reach rank 11 or even rank 12 to kill those top fighter beasts one by one in his time. Thinking of those things made him break through, and he wondered if it was because his goal had become clearer. He planned to reach rank 12 as soon as possible and then enter the second battlefield, fight those monsters, and end the catastrophe right from its source. His goal was not to let this war drag on for 10,000 years, and he was resolute to end it in his time. The other day, Butler Wang Yan was walking towards Lu Shen with the maid, carrying a tray of tea. After respectfully greeting their master, Butler Wang Yan looked at the maid to do her task. As she carefully put the tea on the table, Butler Wang Yan told him that it was a special gift, Ling Chuan's Dragon Well Tea. Lu Sheng took a sip and felt interested because the tea actually contained an odd energy. He never imagined someone would get so far as to send him such tea. Wang Yan clapped his hand, and another servant came in. He told Sir Lu Sheng that the rank 7 weapon he requested to be modified last time had been made. Lu Shang used his psychic power to retrieve it and was amazed that his cold weapon was not just a rank 7 but was closer to rank 8. He informs the butler that he brought back a lot of silver with him this time and asks him to help him make a weapon. He then told Lai Dai, the maid, to see butler Wang Yan off because Lu Shang would be going to invite some friends later and ask her to prepare food and wine. After closing the door, Wang Yan told Lai Dai that her fortune was good because she got to meet someone like Sir Lu Shang. As he waved his hand, he told her to work hard and not to let Sir Lu Sheng down because she may have a chance to succeed in the future. While blushing after hearing what the butler said, she suddenly heard someone chuckling behind her. A hooded person told her not to be afraid because he was her parents' old comrade in arms and once held her in his arms when she was a little. He inquired if she was working for Lu Sheng and asked for a talk. She doubted the man but ended up agreeing. At the Eastern War Zone airport, while Dong Kingsu was waiting for someone, a man with yellow hair moved his eyeglasses to look at her healthy melons and beautiful face. Thinking that she was his type, he approached her and asked which war zone and division she came from. Observing that this man was a general of seven stars, she quickly saluted and answered his question, saying she was Senior Colonel Dong Kingsu under the command of Lieutenant General Yu Fei of the 1182nd Division of the 9th War Zone. The man knew the Ninth War Zone but didn't recognize General Yu Fei. He invited her for dinner with her general, but Dong Kingsu declined, explaining that she was waiting for someone and already had plans for tonight. He ordered her to skip it, but Dong Kingsu elaborated that the person he was waiting for would get very mad. The man released an intense aura and told her to invite that person also because he was wondering if the person she was talking about could cause more commotion than him. The man, laughing, suddenly grabbed his shoulder and told him he would show it to him. The white-haired man, Dong Shengi, 
asked the Eastern Military Division General if that's all he had and then threw him to the other universe, saying that he was just a waste and yet tried to seduce his little sister. As big brother, he didn't agree. His irritated face turned to a calm cat when Dong Kingsu called him big brother. He had not seen his dear little sister for a long time and noticed that she had become prettier. Dong Kingsu coldly responded that she could now go back since he had arrived. Dong Shengyi noticed she hadn't changed and kept people at a distance. However, it was fine for him, and he told her to go back and ordered her to tell the Eastern Military Division Masters that he was coming. At the lively pub, Lu Shang and Qin Shijun were talking. Lu Shang asked if Dong Kingsu really went to the third war zone to pick up someone, to which Qin Shijun agreed. Lu Shang wondered out loud if Dong Kingsu had a friend there that she had to go pick up. Qin Shijun revealed that it was her half-brother Dong Shengyi, a terrifying martial artist like Lu Sheng. He is the most promising disciple of the martial saint, and they can call him a successor. Lu Sheng mumbles that if that's the case, then he is amazing. Qin Shijun laughed upon observing his reaction because he didn't seem amazed. He put his arm on the kid's shoulder and informed him that he knew he had reached 12 stars of combat power and was already talented, but reminded him to stay alert because Dong Shengyi was not just a normal person. Being a martial saint's successor wasn't a joke, and aside from that, Dong Kingsu has another big brother named Dong Potion, who is ranked first in the Central Military Division star ranking. His combat power is at 27 stars, and he was nicknamed the Central Eastern Emperor. He made a gesture and reminded him that it was twice Lu Sheng's combat power. Lu Sheng scoffed, asking if Dong Kingsu's big brother was the Central Emperor. Qin Shijun grabbed his shoulder and inquired if he was feeling nervous. He revealed that Lu Sheng's road wouldn't go smoothly if he planned on dating Dong Kingsu because he must pass the test of her two brothers. With a blushing face, Lu Sheng denied planning to date Dong Kingsu, making Qin Shijun get irritated. He said that he couldn't fool him and added that he was already at the right age to date someone and must not hide it. Lu Sheng was surprised when Qin Shijun revealed that Dong Kingsu didn't hide it from him anymore, so Lu Sheng asked what Dong Kingsu told him. Qin Shijun caught that he really had feelings for Dong Kingsu and teasingly asked why he was so anxious. Lu Sheng was truly a strong martial artist, but when it came to love, he was a greenhorn because Qin Shijun could see it in an instant. Lu Sheng agreed with him and asked what Dong Kingsu told him. Qin Shijun didn't want to tease him anymore, so he revealed that Dong Kingsu admitted she had a feeling for Lu Sheng but reminded him that when she tried to speak to Lu Sheng about it last time, Lu Sheng didn't come. As he poured some wine, he assured him that Dong Kingsu would never change his mind easily when she had already decided on something. All he had to worry about was her two brothers. Humpty Dumpty and Stickman suddenly enter the pub, conversing about how strong Dong Sheng Yi is. On the first day after arriving at their Eastern Military Division, Dong Shengyi had already defeated Sun Heng Yu, who was ranked first in the star general ranking, and Jai Zun, who was second. They wondered who could defeat him now because the top two had already been taken down and mumbled that he just returned with the mission to fight his way through four major military divisions and prove he was the best martial artist because it was his path to becoming a saint. Humpty Dumpty thinks that martial saints would be exaggerated because there are many masters besides him, and there must be someone who can defeat him. Learning that Dong Shengyi already made his move, and remembering that the competition was coming up, Qin Shijun think out loud that Dong Shengyi was arrogant enough to come and challenge them at such moment. As he drank, he uttered that the martial saint's name held power, which is why the division couldn't do anything to Dong Shengyi. He reminds Lu Sheng to be careful because Dong Shengyi claims that he has the power to win against the Eastern Masters, and according to the ranking, it's Lu Sheng's turn soon. And with Lu Sheng's connection with Dong Kingsu, Dong Sheng Yi will definitely target him. Lu Sheng wondered what connection he was talking about, so Qin Shijun asked if he wanted Dong Kingsu to speak up for him so Dong Sheng Yi didn't target him. Lu Sheng denied it and explained that Dong Sheng Yi had just come to the military division to challenge the Eastern Masters to improve his martial arts because it was important for his future development on his path to becoming a martial saint. As a brother in law, he elaborated that if he met Dong Sheng Yi, and defeated him, he would be left broken before he could reach his potential, and his chance to become a martial saint would be shattered. As a consequence, Dong Sheng Yi will regard Lu Sheng as his mortal enemy, and it will be hard for Dong Kingsu to choose a side between the two of them. In the future, if Dong Potion will also go through the same, their relationship might be strained from then on. Hearing how confident Lu Sheng is makes Qin Shijun's mouth drop to the toilet, and as the kid thinks how complicated it is, Qin Shijun analyzes his appearance and carefully looks at Lu Sheng. 
He held his chuckle and was impressed by how good Lu Sheng was at showing off, but Lu Sheng was serious. Meanwhile, on the other side of the military district, a loud boom occurred, and while Dong Sheng Yi wiped the dust from his uniform, he asked the masters if that was all they had. As the masters slowly stood up, they uttered how strong Dong Sheng Yi was and now that all the top ten in their division were defeated, they wondered what to do now. They were startled when Dong Sheng Yi waved his hand at Dong Kingsu, greeting her. A girl pops out from his back, waving her hand at Dong Kingsu, explaining that after 20 years of hiding, senior big brother Dong Sheng Yi will now dominate everyone. She is Lin Wanwen, my ex-girlfriend. Because she arrived with her older brother, Dong Kingsu thinks she has important things to do. Lin Wanwen agreed with big sister Dong Kingsu and informed her that she was doing a study on otherworldly beasts. She needed a lot of samples for experimentation, so she followed senior brother Dong Sheng Yi. She wants to ask for help from the Eastern Military Division, but she can't do it only with Dong Sheng Yi, so she needs Dong Kingsu's help. Dong Sheng Yi called the people of the Eastern Military Divisions useless and had no skills except for Sun Heiyu, who had a tiny trace at least. Dong Kingsu corrected him that it was Sun Hengyu, but he remained still, saying that it was all the same. He added that if they can't handle three moves from him, their name is not important. He slowly approaches Dong Kingsu, and remembering that he and Wanwen came to go to the spatial crack, he asks Dong Kingsu's help because she is a psychic mentalist. Dong Kingsu looked at Lin Wanwen and recalled that her mother's name is actually well known in the Dragon Nation, Marshal Saint Lin Zhengyu. She then asked which spatial crack they were planning to visit and how many floors they were going to explore. Dong Shengyi confidently said that it was the SS rank spatial crack, and the deeper they go, the better because the stronger the beast, the more valuable the sample is. He told her not to underestimate the importance of Lin Wanwen's research because the entire martial arts world might undergo drastic changes, and his chances of being a martial saint might depend on Wanwen. Lin Wanwen chuckled and mumbled that senior brother Dong Shengyi was teasing her again. As she held the pendant from Lu Sheng, Dong Kingsu agreed with them and told them that as long as they promised one thing, she would help them. Dong Sheng Yi agreed with her and asked if she wasn't going to become a master soon. Dong Kingsu told him it wasn't about martial arts and inquired if he really planned on defeating everyone in the ranking. Since he was already there, even though the masters in every division were weaklings, Dong Sheng Yi would make them his warm up. However, Dong Kingsu wants him to skip the fourth, making Dong Sheng Yi wonder who is the master in that area. He smirked after recalling that it was Lu Sheng of the Ninth War Zone with 12 stars. He swiftly snatches the pendant from her and asks if it's a gift from Lu Sheng. Dong Kingsu angrily told him to give it back, and as he did so, he reminded her that she still had a bad temper and couldn't handle any jokes. But since she mentioned Lu Sheng, he will skip him. However, after he conquered all of the five military districts, Lu Sheng had to withstand one of his attacks. Only then will he recognize him and stop interfering in her matter. Otherwise, even if she likes him, it won't work out between the two of them. She froze and didn't answer, so he reminded her he wasn't as cruel as Dong Potion. He mentioned that Qin Shijun lived next door when she was young and tried to pursue her. However, the young Qin Shijun was beaten to death on the spot by Dong Potion. Hearing those words made her speechless, and Dong Sheng Yi advised her to think carefully because not every big brother is as reasonable and nice as him. Lin Wanwen enters the scene by grabbing her hand and telling her not to worry because she will ensure Dong Sheng Yi won't hurt Lu Sheng. Dong Sheng Yi tells Lin Wanwen that if she falls in love one day, her future lover will be in an even more pathetic situation because her mother is a martial saint and she has many senior brothers who are masters. Lin Wanwen calmly smiled at him and said that her mom listened to her, and her senior brothers listened to her mom, so there were no worries. Dong Sheng Yi told them that they must go to the war zone and plan on defeating all the masters of the Eastern Star General ranking within three days. After that, they will enter the SS rank spatial crack. He put Lu Sheng's name on his head and stated that he would remember that name. In the dream space, while Lu Sheng was looking at the system, he couldn't believe that Dong Kingsu had such important figures around her. While one has five stars, the other has six. Dong Sheng Yi is a good talent, and Dong Potion is even a rank 9 martial saint. Knowing that it wasn't rare to be stuck at rank 8 for hundreds of years, he knew Dong Sheng Yi had natural talent. He released heavy sighs after learning that so many martial saints had appeared in the past 10,000 years. However, the three martial saints in the Dragon Nation can't even be considered in the scheme of things, let alone one Dong Potion. He suddenly remembered Dong Kingsu and realized that in this world, more than 90% of men wouldn't be able to say that they don't have feelings for someone like her. When one was young, everyone had crushes on teachers, no matter if they were women or men. 
because the hormones and admiration were quietly planted like seeds into one's foolish heart. Most such seeds die before they meet the surface, and the subtle feeling goes away with time and vanishes like smoke as soon as one reaches out to try to grab it. He wondered if his feelings for her had also started the moment he saw her in the section for spouses or if it was fate. He then decided to practice for a bit and earn some money after he woke up. If Dong Shengyi comes to find him, he can let him go after defeating him with a few moves. However, he wonders if his actions of making a few moves to defeat him won't be exposed. And because Dong Shengyi was his future brother-in-law, he must be respectful to him. Three days later, while Lu Sheng was looking at his phone, he disregarded Zhang Danden because she wasn't on his spouse list. He then remembered that he hadn't contacted He Ling Su for a while, so he chats her. He Ling Su responded with one message saying that she had something to report to him, but after a few moments, she bombarded him with an information message. He wondered if he could really marry someone like her, but he still decided to pay her some attention, so he replied that he got cold recently and told her not to overwork because health is more important. He Ling Su was surprised that Lu Sheng sent him some nice message, so she stretched her legs and sent him the beautiful picture of the cave. Lu Sheng's phone buzzed, and after seeing the booger from the cave, he felt disgusted. He suddenly realized it had been three days, yet Dong Shengyi hadn't shown up. He scrolled through his phone and saw the news about Dong Shengyi defeating all the masters of the Eastern Military Division, and was all lost in one move except for Sun Hengyu. He wondered if Dong Shengyi was letting him off the hook this time because of Dong Kingsu, and since Dong Shengyi gave him some face for her little sister, Lu Sheng would also give him some face for his future wife. If Dong Shengyi didn't want to provoke him, Lu Sheng wouldn't beat him up. It is now time for Lu Sheng to go to spatial crack again because there are still a few days before the Eastern Military District competition. He realized that not only weapons cost money but also his marriage in the future and kids. He stood up and ordered Lai Dai to pack his things because he was going on a mission. At the SS rank spatial crack, Lin Wanwen felt the cold in the area, so Dong Shengyi told her that if she had put all her effort into her martial arts, she wouldn't feel cold. He thinks her genes were wasted. Lin Wanwen clarifies that not everyone wants to pursue the path of martial arts, and after doing something on her pendant, she proudly announced she didn't feel cold anymore. Dong Shengyi told his little sister that Lin Wanwen's pendant was similar to what Lu Sheng gave her, but its value drastically differed because the martial saints will contained inside the pendant was incomparable. However, Dong Kingsu thinks that the pendant Lu Sheng gave her was much better. Dong Shengyi then announced that they must start the exploration with Dong Kingsu as their guide, and he will deal with the beasts. At the S rank spatial crack, since Lu Sheng has already visited this spatial crack during the night and day, he can now tell it is much less eerie and creepy. However, fear was only for the weak. For someone strong like him, all the monsters standing before him wouldn't matter because he had one punch that could defeat all. As he jumps down, he wonders if the beast he encountered earlier is still there and asks if they only exist in an AA rank spatial crack or in every spatial crack. It's not that he was afraid because the last time he tested the beast, which looked like an ant, he knew the other party was just a paper tiger. Even if that beast ant was stronger than him, he was certain it couldn't do anything with the distance. Otherwise, the ant beast wouldn't use such a trick to lure him. Upon landing, he mentioned that if he encountered that beast again, he would retreat as soon as possible. He wondered what Dong Kingsu was doing right now, and speaking of Dong Kingsu, she was now guiding these two idiots using her psychic ability. After Dong Shengyi slices the beast in half, she uses her psychic energy and activates the perception visualization to scan the area. He notified Lin Wanwen that no beasts were around so she could work at ease. Lin Wanwen quickly wore her mask and gloves and pierced the needle into the defeated monster to get some blood samples. She observed that it was really a rank 7, and as she looked at the sample tube, Dong Shengyi told his little sister that the source of a warrior's force is their physique. Every part of it is considered their weapon, unlike those trashy generals of hers. He turned around, boasting about his weapon, saying he practiced the cold weapon to refine his skills. He mumbled that he wouldn't bother using his blade if it didn't help achieve faster development in breaking physical form. After all, the blood of these beasts was dirty. He froze like an ugly duck when Dong Kingsu shut him up by ordering him to help with the collection because no one wanted to hear his boasting. He almost cried as he looked at his sister, but after a while, he killed all the beasts on their path, and they reached the depths. As she looked at her big brother fighting the beasts, she mumbled that she should be happy having such a strong big brother but thinking of what he wanted to do to Lu Sheng, she couldn't help but become irritated. She released a creepy smile as if she would force me to clap until round 8, even though I could handle a round. 
she decided to give her big brother a hard time by giving false information and not warning him. A small portal or crack suddenly appeared that shocked him, so he shouted at his sister and asked why she hadn't warned him about this. If it wasn't for his intuition, he could have perished. She felt sorry for not seeing it but clarified that such a small gap couldn't kill him even if he got hit by it. She wants him to get seriously injured at most. Seeing how crazy his little sister was, he became a rotten egg that had not been watered for years and told her she was unreasonable. Afterwards, he almost gets hit again and again. As he continued fighting, he asked his sister if she wanted to kill him. In response, Dong Kingsu confidently said that she didn't see it. Dong Shengi thinks it was nonsense because she was the one who deliberately led him into it, the one who forced his way into it. However, she remains still in her claim, saying she didn't see it and asking for forgiveness. She will be careful next time. Dong Shang thinks she was truly scary. Even though she wasn't married yet, she was already acting ridiculously, and even dared to betray her own brother. Wan Wen told him to take care of himself, and Dong Sheng Yi warned her not to be like his little sister when she fell in love in the future because she was heartless. On the 34th floor, after slicing some monster, a small portal or crack suddenly appeared again that almost hit him, so he told his sister that the jokes must not go overboard. If she gets him hurt, none of them will be able to leave safely because rank 8 beasts are on this floor. Dong Kingsu didn't see it. But Dong Sheng Yi didn't believe her, so she told him he truly didn't see it this time. This thing didn't exist before and just appeared out of nowhere, and she thinks that it was troublesome. Hearing her explanation made the two look at her, so she asked why they were staring at her. Lin Wanwen repeated what she had said, saying that she hadn't seen it this time, which meant she had seen it earlier. Dong Sheng Yi was shaken and couldn't believe his own sister was doing that kind of scary thing to him. Dong Kinks who told them to stop the nonsense because this is a serious matter. New cracks are appearing, which means a riot is about to happen. They must get out of the place as soon as they can because the riot of SS rank spatial crack is no joke. However, Lin Wanwen needed to collect more samples, so Dong Sheng Yi told them they must continue because he didn't believe in Dong Kinksu anymore. At the S rank spatial crack, 35th floor, Lu Sheng felt sleepy as he casually walked while killing the monsters like a fly. Considering that the Tiger Scorpion team had done it many times, he thought it was just a simple spatial crack. He suddenly stopped when he felt something, and as he held his head, he could feel that the immortal cells were emitting a complex signal, which meant that he or someone dear to him was in danger. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you love this manhwa. Have a good day.